I'm Scott Milne. I'm a modelling analyst here at the ETI. When we think about a low carbon transition for the UK, there's always a risk that we try and deal with each sector in isolation. Part of our core philosophy here at the ETI is to take a system-wide approach to the energy challenge. So we think about power, buildings, transport, industry, and all of the in infrastructure that supports each of those. So using our model of the UK energy system, we've developed two scenarios, clockwork and patchwork, to try and represent some of the challenges that the UK might face and also to try and highlight some of the key technologies that might play a role as part of a cost-effective system design that's fit for the 21st century. And we hope that the scenarios will stimulate debate about the options that we have available, about the choices that people think we ought to make, and about the actions that would follow from those choices in terms of planning and investment and deployment. There are many thousands of possible pathways that we've modelled and clockwork and patchwork represent just two of those. We've tried to distill that down into something that represents the key challenges in each case. At the heart of the ETI's modelling capability is a tool called the Energy Systems Modelling Environment. ESME. And ESME is an internationally peer-reviewed model, the purpose of which is to identify the lowest cost decarbonisation pathways for the UK between now and 2050. So over the years we've run many thousands of simulations through ESME and those runs have allowed us to understand what are the most valuable combinations of different technologies under different conditions. We've tried to distill down the key lessons into these two scenarios, clockwork and patchwork, to try and represent just the, the key messages that seem to come through consistently. In Clockwork we see a structured, well-coordinated approach to energy planning from the national level down and we see a phased decarbonisation approach. So that begins in the power sector with a strong role for new nuclear plants, for carbon capture and storage and also for renewables, predominantly offshore wind. Then the pace begins to pick up in the building sector where we see a significant rollout of district heating schemes and for those households which are beyond the reach of those networks we see them supported by heat pumps. And finally we see a transition in the transport sector, first of all towards more efficient internal combustion engine vehicles and then eventually towards plug-in hybrid vehicles. One of the key features of clockwork is the widespread use of biomass in combination with carbon capture and storage. And what that means is we're able to capture carbon from the atmosphere into the biomass plant matter as it grows. Then we capture the carbon again before it's released to the atmosphere and we can bury it underground safely. So over the course of that whole cycle, we've actively removed the emissions from the environment. The breathing space that we create for ourselves through those negative emissions means that we're able to buy ourselves more time to find low carbon solutions for certain parts of the industry and transport sectors which otherwise can be quite expensive to decarbonise fully. Because of the role that negative emissions play, the cost of decarbonisation in clockwork is more modest than it is in patchwork. But the cost of abatement in clockwork is around 1.4% of GDP by 2050. In patchwork we see less of the top-down national level approach to energy planning and instead we see well, a patchwork of distinct energy strategies emerging at the local and regional levels. And this is also a scenario in which UK society is more engaged on decarbonisation and sustainability generally. In the power sector we see very much a renewables heavy system dominated by offshore wind and because such a large proportion of our energy comes from wind which is an intermittent source we therefore have a much greater need for energy storage and for low carbon backup supply in this scenario. In domestic heating we do see some cities deploying large heat networks like we see in clockwork but other cities take a bit longer to see the value of that so in some cases it's left down to individuals and households to make the investments such as in household retrofits or in heat pumps. Where we see a significant take up of heat pumps that creates additional electricity demand that means that local distribution grids need to be reinforced so eventually all local authorities have to act in some way to ensure that domestic heating can be provided in a low carbon way. In transport we see a mixture of things happening. We have to have much more comprehensive decarbonisation of the transport sector in patchwork. We've also modelled a world in which 
the UK society is increasingly urbanised, so we see a slowdown in the growth of private vehicles as people switch across to public transport more and more. But for those vehicles that people do purchase, we begin to see the emergence of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in this scenario. Now, because different solutions have emerged in different places, we have multiple infrastructures and supply chains, and that requires significant investment to support. Eventually, these different infrastructures begin to be consolidated into more of an integrated national system by 2050. In patchwork, we see a slightly higher abatement cost of 1.6% of GDP by 2050. All of the work that the ETI does feeds into our modelling approach and that's allowed us to demonstrate with confidence that the UK can achieve an affordable transition over the next 35 years to meet the government's greenhouse gas emissions targets. Clockwork and patchwork represent just two possible pathways. They each have their own challenges and they each adopt different solutions towards meeting our energy demand for 2050. But the UK must focus now on developing and proving capability across a basket of the most attractive supply and demand technologies. It's critical that these options are developed over the next 10 years, effectively the lifetime of the next two parliaments, to prepare the UK for a long-term transition ahead. Within any transition, biomass and carbon capture and storage form an important combination. The most cost-effective system designs that we see across our thousands of model runs always take advantage of this negative emissions capability. If either of those technologies don't feature in the system, it would at least double the cost of meeting the UK's climate change targets by 2050. Another way to look at it is that the value of bioenergy and carbon capture and storage to the UK energy system is well in excess of 200 billion pounds. If people only take away one thing from the scenario's work, it should be that 10 years from now, the UK is gonna to have to make some critical choices in terms of the energy infrastructure that we put in place to ensure the long-term transition to a low-carbon energy system. Closing down our options too soon could prove unnecessarily costly, but the bigger threat is failing to build up those options at all.